Hi, everyone. Welcome to our event. This event is brought to you by Data Talks Club, which is a community of people who love data. We have weekly events. This event is one of such events. If you want to find out more about the events we have, you can go to the description. There is a link. Click on this and you'll see all the events we have in our schedule. We have a lot of amazing events. Do check it out. And if you, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, now it's the best time to do it. There is a link, there is a button under the video. Click on this and you'll get all our videos in your feed. And then finally, you can join our amazing Slack community to talk about different data things. During today's presentation, you can ask any question you want. There is a pinned link, pinned link in the live chat. So if you have any question, use that link, ask your question, and then we will be covering these questions at the end of the presentation. That's all from my side. I think now I can do this intro in approximately one minute. Let's... But you haven't mentioned that uh, uh, the community Slack uh, has this Q and A uh, channel. Ah, right. Yeah, I kind of stopped doing this, but uh, yes, we do actually have a channel called Events Q and A. And if you have any questions for Larissa, and you're watching this in the recording, and you still want to ask your question, there's a special channel in Slack for that. Thank you, Larissa, for reminding me about that. And with that, uh, I can, uh, you, the floor is yours. You can start your presentation, please. Okay, let me share the key note. So you should see the full screen, right? Yes. So you see, still see the slides. Yes. Okay, great. So, okay, uh, well, uh, welcome everyone. And uh, I'm really happy to be here again. So we managed to meet uh, and um, uh, today I am uh, going to uh, talk about the back of the envelope calculations for machine learning projects, uh, meaning how can we plan our next machine learning project uh, by using uh, some tools called canvases. Well, um, uh, right now getting into AI uh, machine learning is quite easy. Uh, we have a lot of tools, we have a lot of frameworks, uh, we have a lot of uh, know-how collected um, with, within the community and outside. And what is, what is, difficult, uh, is difficult, difficult is to uh, getting value from uh, mach machine learning. And uh, we have... Um, uh, we have uh, so machine learning uh, potential is huge and exciting. It's developing, uh, and uh, so there is not a problem for uh, generating ideas for machine learning projects. And uh, and I think uh, and what I see, it's getting a problem for many companies because they uh, try to uh, they try to implement too many proof of concepts, too, uh, too, too, too many um, pilot uh, projects um, uh, which are using um, AI and, uh, and as a result, a lot of projects fail. Uh, they fail and, uh, and uh, there is just a small fraction of projects uh, which are successful. So uh, I don't have uh, reliable uh, numbers, but uh, I saw uh, the number of probably 10% of uh, all uh, POCs uh, being um, attempted uh, at getting successful. And I would call these uh, POC crisis, where we uh, have a lot of useless POC implementations of uh, AI uh, projects. And I think uh, we are quite ready for, um, uh, for uh, developing the processes uh, to evaluate and choose the opportunities uh, for machine learning project before they hit these uh, POC investment. Because, uh, because you know, uh, this uh, proof of concept is, uh, it's, it's a, so uh, the pro proof of concept project uh, are getting quite fast into the, uh, into the uh, real production. And, um, 
and proof of concept uh, investment um, may include also a lot of investment like a time uh, people um, and so on and um, uh, say, uh, saying that um, I uh, I would like to suggest this uh, pre POC screening, which is the foundation for these back on the envelope calculations for machine learning projects, and um, I think we uh, in order to evaluate the future machine learning project we can um, uh, we can uh, look into uh, into two. Aspects. First, we we would need to evaluate uh, or validate the workflow integration. Actually, how uh, the AI system fits into the business process, and the second, uh, we would um, need to estimate costs, uh, but not benefits for now. So let's. Uh, start with the first uh, aspect. So let's start uh, with the. Uh, Evaluate, uh, validation of the uh, workflow integration and uh, to uh, to validate the um, like the um, how potentially um, machine learning um, machine learning uh, model will fit into the processes in the or business architecture. We would need to understand the complete business architecture, and this is a, uh, the most surprising uh, thing. What I see. Uh, in uh, uh, in the companies, we don't get the big picture of uh, what's going on. We don't have the uh, complete overview of the processes, um, and we have uh, silos uh, of knowledge in uh, in our companies. And uh, uh, and uh, in order to get the value from machine learning, we need to know where is uh, the um, uh, whereas the task or which task can be replaced by machine learning or where in which task we can introduce machine learning. So, and uh, in my daily work, we are doing um, or we are uh, having a lot of, um, uh, or getting a lot of good experience with um, uh, event storming, um, uh, with uh, event storming, knowledge, this is a knowledge crunching method from uh, domain driven design. It's a, it's a kind of brainstorming where the business problem is investigated with the help of domain experts, and the entire business line is modeled with domain um, events. Uh, and um, uh, and uh, the, so we are so in so after doing the event storming we actually will get uh, this uh, big picture or, or, or understanding of uh, the whole processes in uh, in our business uh, flow so basically what we are uh, what do we want to achieve is to we want to identify that business use case where we apply machine learning machine learning itself uh, is useless I think, and, uh, and, and unless we find the business problem, which is solvable with machine learning, and um, and with event storming, uh, event storming is very inclusive kind of workshops where we get domain experts and machine learning experts together, uh, so to to identify that um, um, that opportunities uh, for uh, machine uh, learning, or or we identify problems. Uh, uh, where we can, uh, which can be solved with machine learning or AI methods, right? Um, another way to navigate this uh, ideation process, uh, or another way to see uh, how can we get these uh, use cases, uh, is to understand uh, where is the um, in the, the whole process, where is the um, which task. Uh, um, which tasks are involved there where we have these human weaknesses. We as human, we are, as humans, we are so, slow. We, can, we cannot see patterns in huge data. So we don't like the repetitive tasks. Um, and, um, and probably in this kind of, um, uh, and this kind of um, uh, spots in our, um, in our flow, in our process flow, we can apply uh, machine learning uh, to um, like to diminish these um, um, human weaknesses. 
Right. Uh, when we identify that problem, I uh, and we have a team of data scientists. These, the data scientists will come up with a lot of ideas, and this is, oh, and this is this is an amazing thing with uh, technology and uh, machine learning in particular. So we can, for one problem, one problem can be solved in many different ways yeah, yeah we can we can formulate the problem as a regression problem we can formulate a problem as a, a classification problem or we can apply um uh we can um we can uh, or we can solve it with a clustering so and uh, and of course deep learning uh, uh, should be uh, present as well well uh but um uh, but uh, all that solutions, uh, they are uh, where they will have the uh, different complexity. And um, I suggest uh, that when we come up with a lot of ideas, first to strike to to um, uh, to order them uh, along with uh, the increasing um, complexity. You might or might not to use th these. Um, um, categories which uh, are now you're seeing on this slide, but. Um, uh, so I suggesting to divide all the possible solutions uh, in four categories. To start with, uh, no, um, no ML uh, solution going to analytics and uh, classical machine learning or AI methods, right? Uh, mm, uh, just why we would need to do this? Um, why we would need to organize this? Because uh, with increasing complexity, we will uh, we will see that the costs for a machine learning project will also increase. Um, cost for implementation, uh, cost for ma maintenance uh, um, and, um, uh, and, and so on. Or, or for example, so we would need uh, with, a mo in, with more complex solution, we would need more time to implement uh, um, uh, uh, or a machine, machine learning um, project. So, and, um, uh, so, for, for instance, if we take the example of re recommendation system, for example, we, we want to help our users to navigate our content uh, uh, on, for example, OLX uh, um, web page, uh, then, uh, um, yeah, we, we can take a uh, recommender system, uh, of course, but, uh, but probably we would uh, also um, need something uh, like no machine learning uh, solution. So we would probably, uh, yeah, uh, generate a, um, a list of items um, or most uh, most popular uh, items uh, from users. So just order them uh, uh, along with popularity and display it. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't. I won't mention random solution because people are getting uh, nervous when I say uh, something select randomly. But but you know these two kind of um, uh, pieces. Um, the next one, right? Uh, so um, so the to validate the uh, workflow integration of machine learning uh, means you will need a clear understanding of how machine learning is embedded in your business workflow. So what are previous steps where machine learning is used and what are sequ sequ sequential steps, right? So, and if you don't get a clear understanding of this uh, workflow, so this is a, to me, this is an indicator that we don't need to go further and uh, um, get uh, get dive into the more complex uh, stuff. So we, will, we we should actually go back and redesign. Um, uh, probably we we are asking the wrong question, right? Next, uh, uh, the second aspect of the um, back on the envelope calculation is uh, we would need to estimate costs, but not benefits. Why? Because um, uh, because actually we can uh, we can. Um, the costs are real, they are tangible and can be estimated. So, and, uh, and our focus is just to, um, you know, we want to get an, uh, an, in, yeah, an intuition. Is this project worth to be pursued? So, so it is, and, and for, for this point of time, at this point of time, the benefits are uncertain, and we cannot uh, see any benefits right now. 
uh, so and um, this is uh, uh, here. So you see the uh, taxonomy of costs, uh, by which is by no means the complete taxonomy. Uh, I would uh, I would say we can distinguish between one time and running costs. Um, uh, so what we should consider, we should consider the uh, uh, human resources which are involved into implementing this proof of concept because there are, there are people involved. Um, so uh, you would need to um, get the cost for the infrastructure uh, uh, and uh, change management. You would actually would if you if you put this POC in production, which is happening all the time. So you would need to um, count the uh, system maintenance. Uh, um, so you you can count uh, uh, roughly uh, twenty percent of the initial um, uh, uh, development costs. All that operational maintenance and. Uh, it's highly probable that you would need uh, data. And uh, if you need to buy some data, so you need to calculate that costs too. Right. So with these two point, points in mind, so like uh, evaluating the uh, work front integration and, uh, the, um, uh, and uh, with the uh, uh, cost estimation in mind, we would apply this uh, working backwards philosophy and um, start with a business value and, and go um, backwards uh, to the data availability. Um, uh, and uh, first we would need to, uh, to um, ensure that we are solving a real business problem. So we would need to um, um, define business KPIs in order to measure our success. Uh, so, and uh, if we get that, so we, we need to ensure that this is a clear business alignment. The second one, we would need to go a step uh, back and um, ensure the feasibility of the, uh, of the project. So we would need uh, to uh, make uh, stuff, uh, the components or um, uh, phases of uh, machine learning projects, like which are, uh, often implicit, we'll need to make them explicit. And um, uh, then uh, the uh, step uh, back is would be uh, ability to implement these, which means, so we would need to see the technical feasibility and ante anticipating costs um, and data availability, um, like um, being a fundamental part of machine learning. So data is important. Uh, so before we start any uh, machine learning project, we would need to um, uh, ensure that uh, that we can we uh, we actually have data, <laughs> right? So uh, so probably working backwards uh, uh, sounds a little bit uh, abstract. Uh, so how can we make this uh, concrete? So I suggest to use uh, to to go this. Uh, um, uh, to go this um, uh, process uh, backwards, um, we, we, we would use um, uh, three canvases. The first one is the machine learning projects to specify business value, to, um, to ensure the feasibility of the project uh, and the ability to implement. For uh, uh, Then we will use uh, ML... Um, 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 mm. We'll use ML, uh, ML Ops Tech Canvas, uh, and uh, additionally, to check the uh, availability of data, we would um, uh, take uh, the data landscape uh, canvas uh, uh, and uh, create uh, the nice view of the available data. Right, let's uh, dive into the uh, machine learning uh, uh, canvas. Uh, machine learning canvas uh, has been um, proposed by Louis Durat. Um, and um, and uh, and I'm a huge fan of this uh, canvas uh, because uh, you can um, mm, mm, you can prototype uh, quite um, a lot with just these uh, these uh, framework. Uh, so this uh, you can um, you what you are doing with this canvas is actually the reality check for your machine learning project. So and. Um, and you can structure your project along with just this canvas. So uh, this, um, uh, we we will start uh, with uh, uh, the with the central part um, 
um, which is value proposition in order to decide uh, what kind of problem we are solving uh, and uh, who are our users and um, uh, who uh, and uh, how can they benefit from the um, uh, from the machine learning system and the uh, the um, the idea behind this value proposition is to ensure the business alignment. The second part, and this is the, the also the second important, um, also the most important part uh, of this uh, canvas is live monitoring, which means uh, we I, we will try to come up with uh, business KPIs. Uh, we will so we should try to answer question, uh, how do we measure success? How do we know that this machine learning uh, model is uh, getting uh, or, or generating business value that, uh, so I don't know, um, it's so the, um, when we embedded uh, machine learning um, into our uh, software project, so do we make our user, um, uh, um, more performant or the the user experience or do we do we improve uh, can we with our recommender system can we actually um, help uh, or user to navigate the content uh, so and uh, I think a couple of weeks ago we had a meetup about business KPIs uh, so I um, I encourage everyone to to watch these uh, recording again because there, there was a lot of information just about about the business kpis okay the uh, in general machine learning canvas consists of two parts um, related to machine learning projects about it's uh, the uh, uh, the left part is about prediction uh, the uh, right part is about uh, training the machine learning model. So uh, also we can also see uh, this, um, the top um, part uh, is more related to the domain knowledge and uh, uh, the bottom part of the canvas uh, is, uh, uh, is about the details uh, of the predictive, predictive engines. So, so there are more technical details. Um, and um, so uh, what's going on here uh, on the uh, left part, uh, we have a prediction task where we do actually specify what is the input, what is the output, and what kind of machine learning uh, um, methods we can use, uh, uh, be it uh, classification, be it uh, clustering or uh, regression, whatever. You put it here. And, uh, in a decision uh, part, uh, building block uh, of this uh, canvas, we we have um, uh, we have uh, um, uh, uh, we have to actually um, specify this uh, flow. Uh, if, uh, when the machine learning model created the predictions, what's happening next? Uh, so uh, and. Um, uh, uh, so uh, like uh, when when machine learning uh, model predictions turning into decisions yeah in order to uh, generate value for our uh, customers making predictions is um, about uh, when we can calculate uh, predictions um, and uh, um, offline uh, evaluation or um, right now in the current version it's um, impact simulation uh, is about answering the question Given the historical data, uh, what what we what will we um, have done if we had deployed this system uh, x uh, month ago? So just uh, try to simulate the uh, the uh, work of the machine learning uh, model uh, just by having the historical data. For example, if we have 12 month, uh, month uh, of data, uh, train a model uh, for the first um, nine months uh, and uh, try to see, uh, uh, try to simulate this uh, um, um, behavior of the model on the, uh, um, on, on, on the last uh, three months. Um, so it sounds like uh, training and testing uh, data sets. Uh, uh, it is, uh, but uh, not in terms of uh, technical machine learning um, uh, metrics, uh, um, but rather uh, by using these business KPIs. So, so uh, 
uh, and um, and also um, when we come up with a non-machine learning solution, so we should actually uh, try to compare these uh, benchmark um, against the machine learning, and uh, and uh, and we should. Uh, clearly see that a machine learning uh, model will uh, generate um, um, uh, generate a business uh, value for us. Uh, the uh, uh, right part is about um, uh, training um, machine learning uh, data sources and data collection is about, um, so we, we uh, just go through uh, them, uh, through all the um, data sources, uh, what we would need uh, to train a model. Um, uh, we uh, try to, sp to sp specify uh, data collection. How do we get new data in order to retrain our model and keep uh, our model um, um, uh, uh, up to date? Um, so because how can we prevent uh, the uh, um, uh, model decay? Building models uh, is the frequency of uh, retraining uh, it's also very uh, use case specific. Uh, for example, uh, for the recommendation system, we can uh, we we would say um, let's uh, um, or the requirements for our district system. So we would like to keep it up to date. So we would uh, retrain it on daily base um, and uh, uh, calculate the predictions for our users um, um, on us on a batch. Um, um, mode and store them uh, in a, in a database. Yeah, and, and um, well, the the last uh, building block is the features. Um, so this uh, this is actually the um, input um, uh, uh, to our uh, machine learning um, model. And um, here we would also need uh, help of domain experts uh, to. Um, um, uh, uh, to specify what kind of uh, features we would need. Right. Um, <clears throat> uh, well, um, um, uh, at this point, we will step back a little bit and talk about the uh, machine learning use case characteristics because um, exactly that characteristics of any machine learning use case uh, will determine um, the infrastructure part um, or infrastructure components uh, of uh, or uh, machine learning project. And um, we roughly distinguish between six um, characteristics such as business alignment, is admission critical or the way we are working on a pilot. Um, for example, also uh, reusability or collaboration um, uh, do we have uh, uh, many teams uh, which are using uh, same features, uh, uh, which are using same data sets, um, um, retraining frequency, how often we retrain or uh, model, is it uh, on an ad hoc manner or uh, it should be retrained on uh, uh, every 10 minutes? Um, the uh, prediction serving mode can, um, a range between uh, batch uh, serving or uh, on the fly um, uh, prediction calculations. Um, uh, we would uh, need to uh, characterize our machine learning um, uh, project uh, uh, according to the implementation updates. Um, it's probably uh, related to the business alignment. Uh, so uh, the implementation updates uh, reflects uh, how often your code for training machine learning uh, model is changing. So it would be probably uh, more uh, frequent um, uh, in the beginning and uh, less frequent uh, in the end when everything is, uh, is stable and uh, formalized. And uh, we don't have to forget regulations, uh, right? So if we have regulatory areas such as medical AI or finance, so we... So every machine learning model in that kind of uh, um, areas um, uh, uh, obey some regulations, yeah? And we have to make sure that we are aware of them. Um, so, so, so we might have them, we might not have them. So, and you can imagine that uh, given that um, uh, kind of um, range uh, of um, these characteristics, 
Um, machine learning use cases can have uh, the combination of this correctly, but, but they don't have to have all of them, right? And uh, on the right, ha right hand side, uh, these settings are more expensive than on the right, left hand side, right? So like retraining machine learning uh, on an ad hoc or, or frequent frequency. So, so this implies different infrastructure components. And um, these characteristics can be easily identified with machine learning canvas. So, and basically you, uh, you can identify serving mode, retaining frequency, business alignment, the regulations or in implementation, uh, implementation updates, and most important, this workflow integration, just by using this canvas. Um, uh, and answering the, uh, the questions uh, uh, inside uh, each uh, building um, building um, blocks. Um, by the way, um, I have I have a write up on my um, on my site, which is um, ml minus ops dot org, where I um, actually when I, where I actually describe this uh, canvas in, in detail. So you can um, you can. You can use it as it is, it's very intuitive, but you can also um, uh, um, read uh, my um, write up about this. Well, um, uh, just um, keep this in mind because we will use these characteristics uh, later. It will be uh, a very important uh, thing to uh, when we go to the infrastructure question. Right now, Mm -hmm. So you see here uh, when uh, or, or within the data sources uh, building block on this canvas, you see the uh, data landscape um, canvas. So in many organizations, uh, there are uh, silos and uh, uh, oceans of data, and um, uh, and the first thing uh, to um, uh, to uh, to build a machine learning solution is to get this overview of uh, available data. So, and um, and to structure this process, uh, to guide you through this this uh, data discovery process, there is a data landscape canvas, uh, uh, which is provided uh, by Datentreiber. Mm. You can download it. And uh, in general, we uh, distinguish between four types of data. It's uh, own, own data, data which we have, which is uh, actually, which we produced like uh, all um, transactional data from, uh, uh, from all the um, orders uh, from our um, e-commerce. Um, it can be earned data from our um, uh, partners. Uh, for example, there are a lot of third place uh, uh, or uh, third place marketplaces, uh, like uh, we can, uh, we, we can, as an organization, we can also sell our stuff uh, at Zalando or uh, Amazon uh, marketplaces. Uh, so, and they will give us uh, statistics or data about the all the transactions uh, um, um, and uh, all the uh, all that stuff. So we will get them from uh, from our um, partners. There is section for paid data you might uh, discover that you would need some data but uh, it's on a ma marketplace um, so I don't, I don't i don't advise you to go to the darknet and buy user data there but uh, this is the, this is the, this kind of data so you there is a lot of mar marketplaces uh, for data uh, data sets so you get this um, you have to pay this data and you have to consider this cost for uh, for for data and the last category of data is a uh, open uh, uh, public data uh, some kind of uh, weather data, uh, some uh, some statistics from uh, from the government, uh, government, uh, and so on. And uh, when you um, uh, when you see that uh, uh, four kind of data, and when you place that uh, 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 data sources which you have or you think you will need or, or you definitely would need so this actually so you you will get this landscape of um uh, of data and uh yeah uh, decide uh, what um uh, uh so if you don't have 
required data, then you you know you have to do this uh, homework first and go and uh, um, access or build um, um, build your data pipe pipelines to to ingest that that data. So and this is all costs, right? So de development costs, uh, human human costs, uh, and time, uh, right now. Mm, so and but right now you you make these all that kind of stuff explicit. Mm. Okay, uh, great. So if you got so far, if you if you filled out the canvas, the machine learning canvas, and data landscape canvas, you are pretty um, you you are doing well. So so that means uh, if there are no gaps, if there are no um, unclearness uh, in so far, we can um, go and uh, try to um, try to architect uh, or uh, a technical solution for uh, uh, for the machine learning um, uh, project. Uh, and for this, we we would uh, use um, MLOps uh, stack um, uh, stack canvas. Uh, which uh, uh, which was developed by me, so I uh, I created this canvas uh, because uh, of exactly these uh, uh, kind of uh, messages uh, from uh, the community. So uh, a couple of months ago, um, so we uh, increasingly get that um, kind of um, yeah. Um, uh, Cries uh, from uh, from many different uh, uh, teams, uh, uh, which uh, were uh, telling uh, us that uh, ML ops is overcrowded. Uh, so these um, so people are getting frustrated uh, because uh, uh, they uh, they don't know how to get into the ML ops, how to approach this um, ML ops uh, infrastructure. Uh, in a um, like in a, in a healthy way, and um, and if you look at the uh, um, at, if you look at the um, all available MLOps tools, framework, systems uh, out uh, uh, the outside, uh, so you you really might get uh, overwhelmed. Um, and um, uh, and I had I had the same situation. So and uh, and the the as an answer for. for as uh, so an answer to, to, to my problem and uh, and probably to um, to many uh, from the community, um, I thought also we need a structured way to um, a structured way to approach uh, to um, to approach the MLOps stack um, and um, and I come up with this uh, canvas uh, because uh, it's uh, is a structured way. Uh, to think about your infrastructure, um, right? And um, um, and uh, this uh, uh, this canvas uh, um, uh, is about MLOps uh, stack. Uh, it uh, um, comprises uh, three main areas: uh, data man uh, uh, data and code management, uh, model management, and uh, metadata management. In general, this uh, canvas can. Uh, can contains um, 12 uh, building uh, blocks um, and in the middle um, where we'll um, uh, we will recognize the value proposition because uh, we always have to uh, keep in mind that we are solving a business problem so this is not a technical problem uh, this is not uh, just uh, you know applying uh, machine learning for something we are solving a business problem. So you can actually transfer this uh, value proposition from machine learning canvas uh, to, um, uh, to this uh, canvas. Uh, and uh, you, um, you will uh, find um, another one um, uh, building blocks, uh, building block like uh, MLOps uh, dilemmas, uh, where I um, try to, um, where I challenge you to answer uh, or to, to to answer questions, uh, build uh, versus buy um, of um, uh, of tools, um, and um, also regarding um, human skills, uh, should we buy 
should you buy skills or should we uh, upskill our uh, people? So it's also the uh, the costs anticipation, right? Um, so maybe uh, maybe in next year. Uh, so when we um, have a stable um, uh, stable um, ML ops um, uh, infrastructure uh, stack uh, uh, canonical stack. Uh, uh, we, I can probably will will remove. Uh, I will remove. But but for now, uh, it's uh, uh, it's just you know to challenge you, uh, asking this question and anticipating that costs. Um, um, right. Um, good. Um, now, uh, now as we uh, um, as we uh, discuss the. Uh, uh, the uh, machine learning uh, use case uh, characteristics. Um, uh, uh, so identifying that characteristics is essential for getting your infrastructure um, stack uh, because uh, because not um, not um, every machine learning uh, use case will have all of the characteristics. So uh, and. Uh, and uh, we, when we define that characteristics for our um, machine learning um, use case, uh, uh, there will be a specific areas in the uh, infrastructure stack which is which will be important for us. For example, the business alignment. Business alignment. Uh, so, is it is it pilot? Is it mission critical? So, we will manifest it in a business um, uh, in a value proposition. So, and. Um, the reusability and collaboration uh, reflects uh, how many or how many teams you have. Uh, uh, do teams uh, or uh, to what extent teams share um, um, assets and artifacts uh, of machine learning? Do they share? Uh, the, uh, so, do many teams use uh, the same features? Uh, so, probably you uh, then you will have to think about feature stores. Which is the interface between um, uh, data uh, engineering um, pipeline and machine learning um, um, uh, workflows? Uh, do you uh, you would probably uh, um, take um, uh, think about the data sources uh, um, uh, or data versioning? Yeah, uh, and if you share the machine learning um, models, uh, you would probably need um, to share the metadata. Uh, in order to um, like uh, provide the uh, re uh, um, um, mm. so in order to uh, 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 to share what what's going on in your uh, in your system and uh, replicate uh, the experiments, retraining frequency. Um, is it uh, is your model um, being retrained on a frequent base, like a, a in or early base, or, or is it like an ad hoc uh, twice a year? And so, and uh, this this implies uh, that we, the more the, the frequent um, is retraining happening, um, the more involved the infrastructure will uh, be, and um, uh, this also might. Um, uh, imply that uh, you would need to uh, look at this uh, model data implication monitoring infrastructure because um, uh, probably you would need to retrain your model every time if we if we uh, realize that there is a performance decay, yeah, and uh, and when we will need to trigger uh, this um, uh, the retraining of the model. So if not, so you probably don't need don't have to care about uh, uh, the monitoring part that much. Mm. Um, um, the serving mode uh, characteristics reflects uh, how the predictions uh, are uh, 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 computed, and uh, we we might have um, um, a batch. Uh, uh, we might have uh, different um, um, different. Um, uh, modes of, uh, it's, it may be either batch or uh, it may be on the flow and uh, uh, probably we would uh, we would need to uh, look at the feature stores uh, if we uh, reuse uh, if, for example it is useful to to think about feature stores if you have uh, um, um, com 
complex, uh, ca uh, or, or complex calculated features, right? So, and you don't want to calculate them uh, uh, on a fly when uh, machine learning um, model need to calculate the predictions. Um, uh, you can uh, you you think about prediction serving uh, um, like infrastructure component. Uh, um, so if you pro, for example, if you need a distributed survey, uh, if you have a um, uh, if you do do you need the, the um, machine learning um, inference accelerator like uh, um, uh, TPUs. Uh, um, or, for example, do we have uh, do we have uh, multi-model or single-model serving? All that kind of questions. Um, um, so I like I I am asking the you all that kind of uh, questions here in the prediction serving and uh, the serving mode ca uh, characteristics will decide um, where or will guide you um, um, for um, uh, for. Uh, uh, say, um, yeah, creating your infrastructure. The implementation updates reflects how often is your uh, code uh, for um, for model training is uh, updated, um, and uh, you probably would like to um, if you if your code is not that not like not stable. So you you try different algorithms, you try different uh, frameworks. Um, you you might. Um, Need a stable experiment uh, management um, uh, part that uh, people can uh, try um, um, uh, a lot of stuff, um, uh, and um, you probably also would need to uh, um, would like to have the um, the machine learning pipelines orchestration for continuous integration and continuous deployment uh, of your um, um, of your uh, machine learning uh, models. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, all right, so uh, the last point is uh, is regulations. Uh, regulations means that uh, uh, we would need to um, the re regulatory area would um, 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 would um, prescribe us to implement uh, um, like we would need to model governance processes in in our. Um, in our organization, that means uh, so we would need to have the con control access. Uh, we would need to implement some policies. We would need to track uh, uh, machine learning um, model activities uh, in our system, uh, and um, and you know and for uh, to implement all the processes for model governance, you would need to uh, have a look um, at. Um, uh, uh, such infrastructure uh, components like uh, data versioning, uh, feature store, uh, uh, metadata uh, store, and um, model registry. So, uh, so we we actually uh, would need to um, ensure that we can reproduce um, all um, um, all results um, and all machine learning models um, uh, uh, at uh, at any point of time uh, in the past. Right, okay. When you got so far by uh, filling out these three canvases, which, uh, which are guiding you through all this uh, thought process of designing machine learning um, projects. So you, you will, I, I promise you will get this, uh, uh, clear understanding what is the business problem is, how to measure su the success of, um, uh, of our system. So we will be quite, um, yeah, quite, we will get a clearness about the complexity of the machine learning solution. So we will look at data and see, do we have data or do we need to go back and uh, implement all this, um, 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 uh, data access um, uh, stuff, um, how machine learning is integrated into business uh, flow. Uh, we, uh, what we did, we, we did actually requirements engineering for machine learning um, by applying the machine learning canvas. And we, we uh, ac actually um, mapped out the technical components uh, for our um, MLOps um, infrastructure. So 
with this, all that items uh, from this list, actually, I I can I can guarantee that the uh, the um, um, the probability of success is is quite high uh, of the uh, uh, proof of concept uh, for your machine learning system. And uh, so it sounds like a plan, so you can go and ask for money <laughs> for your machine learning project. Okay, uh, well, uh, the last three slides uh, from my side. Uh, machine learning uh, canvas, uh, all three canvases are freely available on the internet. And uh, I would suggest, uh, Alexei, we would uh, put the um, links uh, in show notes um, uh, for this uh, recording. Uh, and uh, the data landscape canvas can be downloaded as, you know, as a PDF or image. Uh, and uh, the truly yours um, ML Ops Tech Canvas uh, is avail available uh, as uh, open source on the Mirrorverse as a as a uh, as a mirror board, uh, so you can use these collaboratively in whatever format you like. Um, here we go. So I am I'm ready to take questions if there are some. Yeah, there are quite a few questions. So thanks, Larissa, for your presentation. Um, yeah, quite a lot of information. Thanks. Uh, yeah, so we have um, a few questions in Slido, and I also have a few questions on my own. So the first question is maybe let me just share my screen so you can read them. Okay, so let's start with the first one. So what kind of external data sources according to Canvas you propose to use or search if we are, for example, finance or energy company? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is quite, uh, it is, I mean, uh, this, this depends on the use case on the, or, or the question which are trying to answer with the machine learning Canvas. Uh, so, uh, so basically, uh, like, like, yeah. Next time. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of uh, open data sets from the government. So, and uh, I, I mean, I cannot answer this question in this way <laughs> i'm sorry um it's it's very use case specific uh and uh but try to use this uh, machine uh try to use this data landscape canvas and try to brainstorm with a lot of people everyone domain experts uh, um your data scientists uh, so they they all will come up with uh, a lot of ideas just just put this uh, canvas uh, on miro uh and uh, let people brainstorm. You will see uh, magic happening. Mm -hmm. I promise you. Yeah, right. You also, you mentioned uh, like when you were describing this data canvas, you mentioned that there are data marketplaces. Do you know how to find these marketplaces? Like how to actually look for them? Do I just go to my favorite search engine and write, uh, I don't know, energy data data marketplace? Or there's, there's a known list of marketplaces. <clears throat> Mm. I think this is also a field specific. So like, like medical people, they will know um, which are, because I, I work on a research project. So you can, you can have a look at uh, the research institution. So they, uh, they also produce some, um, some um, um, data, um, uh, data sets, um, um yeah darknet <laughs> oh okay it's 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 recording so uh, don't don't go to darknet <laughs> yeah i know for advertisement um like for advertising there are companies uh, you just give um, let's say a bunch of device ids and the companies say for each device id uh, is it male or female for example mm -hmm. or what is the age of these people or where do they live like well so mm -hmm. this kind of data is uh, 
available for advertising purposes, you know, but I don't know about other domains. So I was curious if there are some sort of data exchanges like that. Yeah, actually, actually, so uh, when I talk about this, I, I remember a couple of years ago, I'm, um, I have some conversations and then I discovered, um, I discovered uh, a lot of small um, companies which are actually uh, crawling the web uh, and uh, try to identify. Um, uh, so let's say you you will uh, ask the, the companies. Uh, so you're working on the uh, e-commerce uh, part, um, uh, and you would like to sell something to um, I don't know uh, medical people, right? So um, doctors, right? So and um, and what you would what would you need is the like the. Uh, the data sets with uh, potential leads like uh, doctor name, uh, address, tele uh, telephone number. So, and what they are doing, uh, they, they do web uh, crawling for exactly these kind of uh, um, data. And you can subscribe. So, and this is um, uh, often this is like a four uh, numbers. Uh, um, amount of money uh, and uh, so, but uh, but they are they are subscription services for this. You 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 would need to specify what kind of data, and they will just uh, crawl the web and and, and clean the data, make it uh, you know in, in the right uh, uh, accessible format. So. Yeah, I think but... uh, they they are, but uh, but they are not that known. But there are a lot of such. And so I, I actually thought, wow, as a, if you know web crawling, so you can <laughs> you can earn money just for for doing web crawling. Yeah, and also there are crowdsourcing um, services like Mechanical Turk or Tolok. For example, right? yes, uh, that's uh, also like here you don't have a marketplace, but you acquire data through crowdsourcing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's little impossible. Can I say little impossible? <laughs> like it's nearly impossible to collect uh, data from all sources, like people, machines, tools. So on what kind of parts uh, we should focus at the beginning? I would say it's it's absolutely uh, use case uh, uh, depend. Like you, so like mapping out this all kind of data, like own data, earn data, uh, paid data, and uh, open data, um, you don't have to use all of them. You first you brainstorm, and then you probably your domain experts will identify which data sets will get most impact. Or it will bring you the most value. So where, where's uh, so this is uh, so before you try this, uh, probably you would need to uh, do many rounds of um, um, that data landscape, um, uh, and uh, the, the, at least the second round of uh, doing the data landscape uh, uh, mapping um, will be after you try to implement uh, the machine learning uh, model so and see what you get and uh, if you don't get results it's either it's the problem statement uh, is not quite you know um, mm, uh, well formulated so we're solving the wrong problem or we do need more data or another data but uh, it's 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 probably difficult to say, in general way, that's absolutely <laughs> uh, use case specific. So um, I really apologize not <laughs> answering <laughs> concretely. Like the uh, other question you had at the beginning, it's also a case specific, right? Okay, then the last one is you mentioned talk about business KPIs. Did you by any chance mean this one? From Adam? Yes, yes, you. So this this was your uh, conversation with uh, I think this Adam. It yes. was Adam, right? So there. So I actually didn't watch. The, I I, re I read the transcript. <laughs> oh, uh, now I know that actually somebody is reading transcripts. 
So, <laughs> yes, I, I'm at least one person <laughs> in this world who is reading the transcript. Um, um, yes, uh, I highly recommend uh, to, uh, to watch this one uh, because uh, the, uh, the machine learning canvas is, uh, yeah, the live monitoring part is uh, exactly this uh, talk. So if you want to, um, because, because uh, before you dive into, uh, before you dive into uh, any implementation, you, you probably would need to uh, specify, how do we know that we are doing well? So, and this is exactly uh, uh, where you guys uh, uh, elaborated on this topic. Yeah, so there is transcript. So if you're not into listening, you can just read. So, yeah. Yeah, somebody is. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I, so. <laughs> okay, uh, I think we should be wrapping up. Do you want to mention anything else before we finish? Yes, please. Um, I, I really encourage you to join the community team data so you you probably you are in within the community if you are watching this talk but uh, um, data talk loop uh, uh, or a mach uh, or ml ops community i'm i'm on these both communities uh, i'm uh, i trying to uh, keep up <laughs> with all, all of the stuff give me a feedback please i encourage you because it's uh, like uh, if you're using uh, any of these uh, these canvases or you're planning to do this i'm really interested in your feedback uh, what's working well what's not so if you have uh, additional questions uh, or do you think uh, something is missing in this canvas uh, you can approach me, uh, write me a direct message. Uh, I will answer you, I promise you. So please do. Yeah, thanks. And so the best way to luck. find you is uh, on the communities, right? And good luck with your next project. Yeah, I shared a couple of links. So the first link I shared was MLOps, so this content phase zero. Exactly. This is the des description the, yeah. of uh, uh, this is the description. Yeah, I mentioned the AI canvas and I, I also right, but I described the uh, machine learning canvas in more detail. And then the other link I shared was uh, this on the lobster canvas. This exactly. Right things, right? exactly. This is this is this is quite new. So, um, so thank you very much, Alexei, for helping me and giving me a feedback. Uh, <laughs> uh, we spent a lot of time on writing this uh, and you reading this. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, what should I say? Let's rock the evening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if there is anything else you want to share with um, uh... Like put under the description, share with me, just send me the links and I'll put them in the show I'll notes. Do. And yeah, th this I don't have the link to this data landscape uh, canvas. You will get it, I yeah. promise you. Thanks a lot. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for sharing uh, your uh, expertise with us. Thanks for showing us the these canvases. How do I incline it? Canvases or canvases? Like what's I don't the know. <laughs> <Okay>. Somebody. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I need to, to find somewhere how to pronounce this uh, plural of canvas correctly. Okay, yeah, anyways, thanks everyone for joining us today as well. Thanks for asking questions and enjoy the rest of your day.